Alberta is curtailing oil production. This is in an effort to trim the price differential between WCS and West Texas Intermediate. And there are definitely mixed reactions from the industry about the government's intervention. Let's now find out why Synovus is praising Premier Notley's move to cut output. The company's CEO is joining us right now, Alex Pourbay. Uh, good to be with you, Alex. Thank you so much uh, for being with us. Appreciate your time. Well, happy to, happy to join, Catherine. L let me get your reaction to this. Why, why have you been in such favor of this move, curtailment, government intervention? Well, I, you know, I think anybody who knows this industry uh, well understands that, for the most part, we're a bunch of, uh, of capitalists. But I, I would say what, what really got me thinking on this issue was watching the, the, the devastating widening of that heavy oil differential in Canada in October and November. Uh, we, for most of those two months, we were at a period of time where basically uh, heavy oil in Alberta was fetching a price of five or ten dollars uh, a barrel, and that is not sustainable. Not sustainable for the province, uh, for the industry, uh, or for Canada. It was going to have devastating impacts. And and I had come to the conclusion that letting the market work only works when you have a market that is working. And right now, with the lack of pipelines being constructed over the past decade. Uh, we were just not seeing anything that was moving that differential to a point where it was going to do anything other than devastate the economy of the province. Alex, as we know, we've been reporting all day here on BNN Bloomberg that there are those who disagree and they tend to be more the integrated players. And I do want to get your reaction to what we heard from Rich Kruger today. He says that free markets do work and intervention carries trade risks and sends a negative message to investors about doing business in Alberta as well as Canada. Some would say in order to let the markets uh, play out, you just have to let time uh, be on your side and, and let the markets play out from a timing perspective. Why, why would he be wrong in your mind, if he is wrong in your mind? Look, I, I fully understand why the integrated players do not have the same incentives to cut production. But I think it's really important for people to, to understand that this resource is not owned by Synovus, it's not owned by the integrated, it's owned by the people of Alberta. And when you're pumping four and a half million barrels a day of it out of the ground and making no profit, that, that is a market that is not working. I, I, I sat by, I watched what, what was happening. I did not see anything that led me to the view that this was going uh, to mitigate itself any time in, in the near future. And as to the, the, the concern uh, that this would put a, a dampening on the investment climate, uh, I view it the exact opposite. I, I think the uh, Alberta, the Canadian energy business, has been uh, persona non grata to the international investment community for months uh, exactly as a result of the impacts of this lack of market access. Uh, the, the shareholders that I've spoken to, the large investors, uh, they, they understand this is a significant uh, issue with the government stepping in the way they did. But I, uh, what I've seen from those investors is they are largely saying it is, dem it, it is demonstrably the right thing to do in this circumstance to bring some stability to what had otherwise been uh, a really, really problematic situation. So, Alex, it's interesting that perhaps foreign investors look at this intervention, government intervention, as a positive. It brings stability. What's their view, though, from a federal government perspective in terms of whether or not there's enough being done there? Well, I, you know, I, I think the, the obvious, or well, let me put it this way. Uh, we may not agree, uh, all of the, the producers in Alberta might not agree on the way to deal with this situation, but I would tell you there is a 100% consensus that the problem is caused by lack of pipelines. This is a political problem, and it requires a political solution. So uh, every time I talk to a shareholder, the message that I am getting is make sure your government understands they have to be doing everything possible uh, to get this solution fixed. So there is, there is a very clear consensus on that side. What I'm getting at, and I appreciate your answer, what I'm asking is, is whether or not the move by the Alberta government is enough 
to cause foreign capital to be interested in the Canadian energy patch or not yet? We need a lot more to be seen from the federal government. Um, you know, I, th I think everybody, ev everybody would view this, or most people would view this, as a significant positive. I, I have seen a number of different analyses done uh, by uh, people who look at this industry, and I think the general perception is that this action will add billions of dollars to upstream cash flows at a time when those cash flows are sorely needed. Now, obviously, uh, what we have from the government, it is a temporary solution, and it must be followed up by rail movements increasing and ultimately by pipelines. Uh, th this really is only, I think, intended to be a very short-term Band-Aid uh, to deal with a very acute short-term problem. Is there a risk of a bit of a slippery, slippery slope here, though, Alex, in the sense that now that we have government intervention from the Alberta government, that perhaps... They, if they don't get the intended consequences, there might be unintended consequences in terms of the government staying involved for too long and, uh, and thereby really removing market, uh, free markets. No, I, I, you know, I don't want to talk for the government, but I will say that I have been in close communication with the government for weeks on this issue. And what I would tell you is uh, the government only took this action after an incredibly uh, uh, long process of research and consultation with industry experts. They did not take this lightly. Uh, from every discussion I've had, they want to get out of this as soon as possible. They do not see it as, as a positive long term for them to be involved. And, and I think they've even done some positive things. Mm -hmm. Every 30 days, they're going to look at, at the... Uh, the, the amount that's being produced and what's moving, they're going to adjust it. And they've put in a one-year sunset clause. So I think that goes a long way to, com to giving some comfort to those people who might otherwise be worried that the government might keep this in the toolbox. Well, Alex, that reminds me, though, the federal government, they don't necessarily want to be owners of pipelines, but here we are. They are owners of, of pipelines, and we still need to get that built. Um, so, you, you know, you can have these unintended consequences in terms of the government staying involved longer than they anticipated and certainly than the market anticipated as well. We talk about this so often, ever, so often in terms of the issues at hand. What is the actual fix? We know that the fix in terms of the supply situation is pipelines, but we're not there. So what's in your mind is the actual fix that will be a solution to ca Canadians across the country? Well, r right away, the industry needs to get more oil moving by rail. My company, Sonovus, uh, in October announced that we've signed deals with the two national rail companies to move 100 thousand barrels a day for the next three years so companies doing the same thing we're doing is going to help what should really help is Enbridge's line three replacement uh, that is going to add the better part of 400,000 barrels a day of incremental takeaway capacity towards the end of next year that must go uh, and the government the federal government needs to do everything in their power to accelerate the TMX project and get that moving um, we, we will ultimately need uh, Line 3 and we will need at least one project on top of that, if not both uh, TMX and Keystone XL. Uh, and we just have to get those projects off high center and get them moving. And until they do, we're going to continue to face these challenges in getting oil out of our province. Bottom line, the decision today to curtail Alberta production, how many jobs did it save? Well, you know, I would tell you, my company had two budgets. We're about to announce our budget in the next week or so. Uh, we had a budget for $40 differentials, and we had a budget at $20 differentials, and those budgets are worlds apart. And if the government had not stepped in, not only would Sonovus have massively cut back its winter program, uh, but that would have had knock-on effects to the communities we work in, the contractors that we use, the drilling contractors, the completions contractors, this was going to have a very, very big effect. And most of the other uh, peers uh, that I have heard from or have seen on TV have been saying the exact same thing, that without this, you were going to see an extraordinarily difficult 
uh, winter uh, drilling program for Alberta. Do those two separate budgets planned, um, will they stay the same or are you going to do any additional tweaks? You know, I, 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 we've seen, uh, just with the announcement, we've seen a pretty significant move in the differentials. Uh, it is moving towards $20. Uh, and I think once we clear off this massive uh, uh, storage position that's built up in the province, uh, I, I would expect that we'll see differentials start moving towards that $20 range into the new year. And uh, at that point, uh, it isn't, trust me, it is not nearly as good as moving that oil by pipeline to the Gulf Coast. But uh, all of the companies in Alberta at reasonable WTI prices can make decent money with a $20 mm. differential. And I, and I would hope that's where that's going to go. And, and hopefully the province is out of this business mm. of mandating production by, by the middle of the year. Alex, good to be with you today. Thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate your time. Yeah, thanks. No worries. Thanks, Catherine. Thank Take you. Care. That's uh, Alex Porbe, the CEO of Synovus Energy.